the great Zen master, came into the presence of an even greater master called Chao Chao. Likwa asked Chao Chao, It is said that Kuan Yin has 10,000 eyes. Tell me, master, which is the true eye? Chao Chao answered, saying, When you are asleep in the dark and in the middle of the night, your pillow falls to the floor and you bend and pick it up and lay again to sleep. Which eye is it? And Likwa said, Yes, I understand. The eye is the whole body. No, said Chao Chao. The whole body is the eye. In a time long ago, there was a young merchant, handsome, virile, successful in his business, used to all the good things of life. His name was <coughs> Rahul, but Rahul fell in love with a beautiful young courtesan who lived on the other side of the river. He loved her with all his heart, not just for the wonder of uniting with her physically, but deep inside himself he loved her with all his heart. One day, after his business was done, he felt her stirring within him, and he resolved to go across the river to be with her. But it, a great storm had come, and the river had risen, tumbling down, roaring, as it passed through the village. But with his resolve in his heart and her name, Chintamani, on his lips, rising out of the depths of his heart, he went down to the riverside, but he found that none of the fairy men would take him across the river. the roaring of his heart, the longing to be with his beloved was so great that he set out to cross that river. Diving into its roaring torrent, he felt himself carried down, almost drowning as he fought for his breath, and just as he felt that he was going to be brought under the roaring water, a log came by, and clinging to it, he was able to paddle to the other side, clambering out of the river, wet, he made his way to Chintamani's house. But when he arrived there, he found that all the entrances were locked and Chintamani's chamber was on the upper 
floor, looking around and looking up at the balcony that led to her chamber, he saw what he thought was a rope hanging down, and so he made his way, and climbing up, hand over hand, he came to the balcony and climbed over, entering the chamber where Chintamani laid asleep in her bed. He went over and bent over her, and the dripping from the water of the river awakened her, and she was greatly surprised, asking him, How did you get here? Why did you come? And Raoul, again, announcing his love for her, saying, my love for you called me here. I could not not come to you. Chintamani looked at him and said gently, the love that you have for me is too great. I am unworthy of such a love. The love that you have should be for God. Go, my beloved Rehuel. Seek God with the love that is in your heart. Come to me. No more. Sadly, but something stirring deep within him. Rahul went, but before doing so, Chintamani accompanied him, and when they went out into the morning light, they found that what Rahul had seen as the rope hanging from the balcony, it was a deadly snake. Then they went to the riverside, and there they discovered that the log that had carried Rahul across the river was a body, a corpse that had fallen into the river and drowned. Rahul went back and discarding his garments, he put on the robes of a seeker, a seeker after God. Rahul spent several <coughs> years casting off the garments that one wears in existence and life, the garments of the merchant, the garments of the lover. After some years, one day, he was walking down the road when just before him, he saw a woman, black hair cascading down her back, and immediately his heart erased. Chintamani, Chintamani. And he followed the woman along the path until she came to a doorway, the doorway to her house. And she turned around because she knew that there was a monk following 
here? She asked him quietly. Why do you follow me? He merely looked at her and said, Please, would you bring for me two needles? Quite surprised, but bowing to the monk, she entered her house and returned with two needles in her hands, which she handed to Rahul. Rahul looked at her once more, cast his eyes around the immediacy of his existence and taking the needles he cast them into his eyes. Now blinded existence for him in the way of the senses was no more. Rahul became a great poet, bringing forth from the depths of the darkness into which he had arrived, bringing forth that which can change all of life. We might call it the power of the darkness, called the void, <coughs> that which lies beyond existence. Thank you. Stories of chemistry. Like the great alchemy of life. They bring that which brings us to the place where the philosopher's stone arrives and in the way of alchemy we are turned into gold. What is the meaning of gold? Why, in all the cultures of the world, do we seek to acquire it? What is its symbolic meaning for us? Gold. Thank you.